Hey guys, and welcome back. I am Sam Crack, and today I want to show you how you can get a 100% free VIN report or a vehicle history report for any car you might be interested in bidding on, purchasing, or just want to know more about. Now, a vehicle history report shows whether a car was in an accident. It also will show if the car was ever deemed a total loss. It will show how many owners the car had, how many states it's lived in. It shows all sorts of things. One of the other things that Carfax has been doing as of the last few years is giving you a complete history report on maintenance items. If a car was ever brought into the dealership, it gets reported to Carfax and they publish it in the report they sell to you. Now the thing is, these history reports can be quite costly, but like I said, today I'm going to show you how to get a totally free one. And as a matter of fact, in my opinion, this method is just as good as a very costly Carfax report and beats a lot of the other guys like AutoCheck or some of the other ones that exist. And again, it's totally free. To understand how a VIN report works, basically anytime there's a historical event occurring in a car, whether it gets sold at a dealership, whether somebody buys it and registers it uh, privately, that goes into a database. And Carfax or any other VIN report company will pull from that database and they generate a report based off of that. It's really pretty simple but a lot of work has been put in the process in order to generate these reports and it's why they usually cost something. So the method I'm going to show you today relies on two sources. One of them actually being Carfax and the other one on another site I'm going to show you right now. Basically as long as you have a computer or a phone you're going to be able to generate this free report on any car you want. And it's not limited. You can do it on as many cars as you wish. Let's hop on the computer and let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, now we are on our computer and I'm going to compare two Carfax VIN reports that I purchased personally uh, to the free vehicle history report. So I'm going to show you how good and how close it is to Carfax. Let me show you here. This is the VIN history report to my 2007 Mercedes S600 that you've guys seen on the channel before. Uh, right here, this is a clean title car, no accidents reported to Carfax, no other damage reported to Carfax, three previous owners, it sounds right, I should be the third owner, that's what I was told when I bought it, and there are 33 service history records. So that's basically going to the dealership, uh, going anywhere that reports a service history. We can go one, we can see the first owner purchased a car in 06, owned it for three years. Second owner purchased it in 09, had it for uh, almost six years. And then myself, I've had it for a whole 27 days. All of that seems pretty accurate so far. So a Carfax is actually really coveted amongst its competitors because in between uh, those what seem to be kind of boring registration records, if you look here, uh, look at Crown Euro cars. This car at 42,000 miles had a brake fluid flush with a brake pad change and the brakes check. Now that's not exactly telling me which brake pads were changed, um, what sort of fluid they used, and really detailed things, but it doesn't matter. It's just showing that the car was serviced again at Crown Euro cars. It was then serviced again here, Crown Euro cars, then serviced 10,000 miles later, continually. They, they, this car was serviced very well. It's one of the reasons I bought it. It had a good maintenance history at the dealership. That's always good to see when you're buying a used car. Now let's go to a salvage title or branded title car. This is the Carfax that I purchased for a 2008 S-Class. Uh, it's one in this video above where I showed you that I believe this car might have actually been totaled twice. It's why I didn't end up purchasing it, even though I had some prior interest, uh, purchased this Carfax and then strayed away from it. And again, we can go through this. You might have already seen this video, but we can continue down. And uh, this car was uh, here serviced at Mercedes-Benz of Bellevue. We go down and then at 20,000 miles, and uh, in 2015, it was declared a total loss uh, by collision damage. And then, as I showed in the other video, here are some more total loss records. Again, why I personally stayed away from this car. Again, these are just used 
for example, showing you what a Carfax provides and why people tend to like Carfax. Now the first website we'll be using for this process is called research.com. It's very simple. The link is in the description box below. Click right here to get a free report. We're going to enter our VIN number. Let's start with uh, my personal Mercedes, which should show up as a clean title. And uh, let's see what they say. We'll put it in here, we'll hit continue, and you can do this as many times as you like. There's no limitation to how many times you can run these free vehicle history reports. So our page loaded here, there are 91 records available. We got a green check mark, no accident, junk salvage, or insurance records uh, on this car. Now, here it says the day, 2006, is when the car was made. At 32 miles, it surfaced here in Florida, uh, shipped over from Germany. And now it's showing us some uh, recalls on it. And then here, we can match up with our real Carfax. Just for example, you don't need to obviously go buy the Carfax, but at 4,593 miles, there was a odometer a report that was of some sort of importance and we go back and look that's when the car was sold so obviously they're gonna mark that down here we go here is another uh, mileage record of interest at 40,242 miles at BMW of Sarasota here in Florida the car was listed for sale for $33,500 and had 40,000 miles so this right here is going to give us our important odometer records like a Carfax would and pair them with the uh, history event that occurred at that mileage so we can keep going down to see that there's no accident records, no previous uses, whether it was a rental. That's another thing Carfax will show you that some people are interested in. Was this car used as a rental car? Uh, was it used as a police car? Uh, so there's a lot of different things this free research.com report is going to give you, uh, whether it still has a lien on it, uh, whether it was obviously salvage. And here is... Uh, one of the sales records, it's showing you here that it did sell at BMW Sarasota back in 2015. I bought it from the individual that bought it from there. So we can go down. It gives us some of these market value calculators. You can use those if you wish. I tend to think that, especially an odd car like this, doesn't fit into the price range that they give you. Usually they're either too high or too low. So that's our first half of the free vehicle history report. Now for good measure, we'll go back to the website. We're going to run a salvage title car through research.com and that is going to be our 2008 Mercedes example car and just make sure it tells us that it did have an accident or salvage record on it. And here we go, the first thing that pops up is that there's a red X It says that it's an accident, junk, or salvage insurance record. And of course, on my channel, we talk a lot about salvage cars, bidding on salvage cars. So if you see that and you're expecting it, of course, you want to see that. But a big thing for you to keep in mind, a lot of clear title auction cars were still a total loss at one time. That could be for many different reasons. So it's important to always run your history report, as a lot of people sometimes will say, oh, the auction says it's a clear title, I'm just going to bid on it without doing this. When they get it, there's still a red X on the title somewhere, whether it tells you that it was branded at one time and clear now. Uh, usually that's an odd situation, but it does happen. So if you think you're getting a clear title, make sure you always run your at least your free vehicle history report. I don't think there's any reason to actually purchase a Carfax after what I'm going to show you. However, if you feel more comfortable doing so, by all means, Carfax does provide one really easy and comprehensive list of vehicle service records and uh, important historical events. So let's go through our salvage S-Class here. And we're gonna go down again. The car shows uh, its first historical record at 23 miles, showing similar recalls to my car. And then in 2015, like we saw on our Carfax, that this car uh, had a uh, salvage record before it had a state accident record. State accident records are also important. Sometimes the state will provide you a copy of what happened in the accident if there was a police that reported on it. If you're interested in that, those usually always cost you money. I've never seen those for free, but right here in 2015, here is our salvage record, which coincides with 
our accident record. We keep going down. And so here's our record in 2016 at Copart. Our first record was at IAA, which is the insurance auto auction, then to Copart, then uh, Copart again. Uh, then it showed back up at IAA in 2017. This is the problematic car that, like I said, once I pulled the report, I decided not to bid on it. But we can keep going down. And here's our odometer records of importance here. These are all the historical ones. And if we keep going down, here is our accident record. It was in King County, Washington, which I said previously that, you know, the state usually charges you for more detailed accident record. This is actually very good accident record, showing you that the type of crash was a property damage crash. Uh, it said that uh, the posted speed was 30 miles per hour where they got into the crash. This is kind of uh, interesting stuff. And to get it for free, you really can't beat it. So we'll continue down, and it shows you previous vehicle uses and incidents. Of course, it shows nine accident or salvage records. And uh, that doesn't mean it was total nine times. That just means that uh, nine times there were accident uh, historical events. So that could be it going to a salvage auction. It could be the accident itself. It could be the police report. It could be a bunch of different things. So here's nine accident salvage uh, records. Here are the more detailed junk salvage or insurance records. One, two, three, four, five of those. And we even get... Uh, the detailed photos, so these photos were pulled from the salvage auction in Portland, Oregon, where it first showed up, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so take a good look at those. You can see that nice front end damage, leaving pretty much the whole entire front end and that frame trashed on this car. So this research.com report is actually, in my opinion, more comprehensive than Carfax. The only thing is it might be a little bit more difficult to read for the average consumer because there's just so much data in it. However, that's not a bad thing. Sift through it all and for free, you can have a ton of information on your car. Now, what research.com didn't show us was any sort of service records the car might have had. And while you can usually call up a dealership, provide them with a VIN number and get any service records, sometimes you might not know the dealership the car was serviced at, especially if the car is at auction, you're not buying a private party. That's where My Car Facts comes in. The link to My Car Facts is in the description box below. And when you first go there, you're going to be prompted to sign up right here. Now, I already have an account. I'm going to log in and then I'm going to show you exactly what you see and how to take the VIN number of my personal car, load it into the system, and then utilize it in My Car Facts to see any sort of uh, maintenance history that was done on dealerships on my specific car or the car you're looking at. So now I've logged into my Carfax, and you can see already here, this is my garage. It allows up to eight cars, but of course, when you're done uh, looking at a car, say you decide not to purchase it, or you're not interested in it anymore, you can just go right here where it says Edit Garage, click the Delete button, and then click Done. It will get rid of that car and free up a space. So let's hit Cancel on this, because I want to keep my car in my garage. This is my personal 2007 Mercedes S600. When I click it, it gives us a lot of different great information, like a maintenance schedule, service history, um, what they would think repair costs would be on this car. But what we're most concerned about are the service history records. We're gonna add those to the records that research.com gave us, and that's gonna give us a really comprehensive uh, VIN report. So basically, if I go right here where it says service history, it's gonna show me where this car was serviced and at what mileage it was serviced. And if a dealership reports it, it's gonna tell me what sort of service was performed. So let's go all the way down from the beginning of time and we'll see, and let's do one of the earlier services. At around 5,000 miles, it had the oil and filter changed. Let's go to 14,000 miles, the oil and filter was changed. We go to 20,000 miles, there was a maintenance inspection. 24,000 miles, another maintenance inspection. We can keep going on and on and on. Again, and one of the big reasons I bought my personal S-Class is because it was serviced so regularly. We can keep going up here. At 30,000 miles, a serpentine belt was replaced. 
Uh, right here was a big one at 40,000 miles. It had the engine mounts, which are a common failure point on a lot of the V12 Mercedes replaced. The starter was replaced. Transmission mount was replaced. So now we've taken a look at my car and we've seen all the service history on it that was reported at dealerships. We can go back to the garage and let me show you quick how to add a car. You just click add a car. We're going to take the VIN number of the what I'm calling the two-time total Mercedes. I don't know that for a fact, but it's just my, just my assumption. We'll hit copy, and we're going to put the VIN number into my Carfax. It's going to find the car. It says, is this your car, the 08 Mercedes S550? We're going to say yes, and there it is in our garage. Go back and show you. Here it is, 2008. We can go right here, check out the service history on it, and you can see this car was also uh, this car was also serviced at the dealer a few times, uh, not that many, but the car is only showing around 25,000 miles on it. Why there's not that many service records on it? But here we go again at 10,000 miles. It had several different things repaired or replaced or serviced on it and we can compile that history alongside of our research.com history report to give us one really total comprehensive VIN history report that in my opinion totally rivals Carfax. I hope this process has helped you. I know a lot of times I'll be looking at a car and maybe I don't have intentions of buying it but I just want to know more about it, where it came from, why it might be priced lower than average, there's a lot of different things that can actually determine a vehicle's price. And of course, please do remember that a Carfax or any other VIN report is not a surefire way to tell whether a car was in an accident or had some other damage. The best way to do that is have yourself or a trusted mechanic inspect it. Because sometimes these events don't get reported and if they don't, they're not going to show up on a vehicle history report. Now, I hope you learned something from this video. If it did and you feel it helped you out, please be sure to hit the like button. Also, make sure you subscribe for future videos just like this one. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you very soon.